These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <clears throat> All right, well, what's up, everybody? It's Grim Green back here, and today I'm doing my review for the Nevox Feelin XR Pro. When it was all said and done, I've put about 300 to 350 puffs on this. It's hard to keep track. And after those 350 puffs, I'm pretty sure I know everything I need to know about the Feelin XR Pro. And before I go real far into this, I just want to make a blanket statement kind of at the beginning here and say, I don't love these types of pod mods. They're never really ever my preferred way to vape, especially in this like stick form factor, this big stick form factor. You know, I like pods and I like them to be small and mouth to lung. And then I like mods and I like them to be big and cloud chasing. And when I'm using this kind of just feels like I'm driving a minivan. Like it, it's gonna vape, but it's not gonna do it with any style. I did have some pod drama, but before that, desk. This XR Pro is kind of just a big old stick. It's tall, it's about three and a half inches tall this way, that's in freedom units, and it's heavy, dirty kitchen scale. 118 grams is nothing to blow your nose at. I can feel every gram of that 118 grams. It's a weighty guy. But the trade-off is a 2,500 mAh battery and a four and a half mil pod. I've got, honestly, no complaints really with the battery. I mean, some complaints with the battery, but we'll cross that bridge later. Right now, I want to talk about my pod drama. The XR uses sealed pods. This was the point two that I started with, but it also can use coil head based pods that come as an empty tank that you jam a coil head into. They have this whole compatibility chart, and honestly, I, this doesn't bother me. I like this. For me, as a vapor, I know what's going on here, and this is really very thorough, but maybe it could be a a little bit intimidating to someone who maybe has never had a vape before. If I had never had a vape before, I would be intimidated by this. Well, am I doing this right? I started off with this 0.2 pod and I filled it up and it was vaping great. And I used it for about 150 puffs. And then suddenly without warning out of nowhere, it just kept giving me a no atomizer, no atomizer, no atomizer. And it's a sealed pod. So apart from, you know, just inspecting it, there's not much I can do to troubleshoot this. This is a this is a useless pod now. It's got this rubber filling port on the bottom, which is nice and big and easy to fill. And I thought for maybe a second that wasn't pushed in all the way and it was keeping it from connecting. That was not the case. So I grabbed the empty pod and put a 0.6 coil in here using that for restricted lung. And let me tell you, I don't enjoy it at all. The 0.6 might be my least favorite that I've used so far out of all these feeling XRs. The empty pods have like this really great rubber tip and the sealed pods are just kind of plastic plastic on top, neither of them make this hands-free. In fact, the weight of this alone makes it not hands-free. Super not loving the 0.6, so I immediately wanted to take that out there. And where we landed was with another sealed 0.2. And we're getting to, hang on, I'm getting to about 97 puffs now. And it was about 150 puffs where the other coil head just completely died. It's big and it's heavy, but the form factor is pretty okay. Overall, I find this whole thing just a, you yeah, know, I don't know, maybe a little bit boring, right? It's a real un eventful screen. I can adjust my wattage up and down. I can three click it and it will lock everything. It locks the fire button. It locks the up down, but it allows me to use the airflow switch still to vape on it. It's five on five off. There's no other menus. There's no other screens. That's it. And I have also had a few airflow switch issues, but that's something for normal view. Go there now. Okay. Okay. You're not gonna believe this. Got back from Uppy Closey, I took a drag and it gave me a no atomizer warning on my 0.2 pod that was just about to reach 100 puffs. And I freaked out. I went, oh, there it is. That's what these pods do, I guess. To be fair, only one pod has given me that consistent check atomizer, check atomizer, but that is such a crap feeling. I switched to this empty pod and the 0.6, still vaping great, still has really good flavor, honestly. I just don't love the airflow. It feels, I'm gonna use a word here that I don't think I've ever used to describe airflow before, but to me, it feels, ready for it? Ragged. It's not turbulent, it's not sharp, it feels ragged, like there's something hanging in front of the airflow, like just wildly moving around. I guess that is a little bit of turbulence, but it feels mostly what I would call ragged. Kind of the opposite of what a really smooth pod would feel like. This newer 0.3 pod is working great. The flavor's great, the airflow's smooth, and I just don't know why it's such a huge difference in vape quality 
between a 0.2 and a 0.3 or between a 0.3 and a 0.6. It's kind of just been all over the place with sometimes I'm enjoying it and sometimes I'm really not. It's not something I was ever drawn to. It was sitting on my desk and I reached past it at least a thousand times. The big capacity and the big battery on this and that really good Nevox flavor is really what this has going for it because most everything else I'm not super on board with. And to make matters slightly worse, the airflow switch on this isn't the most active airflow switch in the world. I am constantly, constantly having it sputter. Sputter Nation, Sputter City, Utah. I know you can hear that sputtering. If I wanna get this airflow switch to activate, I have to take a pretty aggressive pull on it. I can use the button, you know, I'm not an idiot. I know that I can use the button and take a lighter drag, but I like the airflow switch and it's a feature on this I would like to use. You know, I guess not every device, every Mod Pod has to be cool or look cool or be sort of flashy in any way, but I, I can't get over the, the pure minivan vibes that this has given me. Got a great battery, but it's a minivan. And look, I'm not here to judge anybody who wants to vape the equivalent of a minivan. I drove a minivan, okay, for a number of years. Desert Champagne, Ford Windstar, rest in peace. The flavor of these pods is, I feel, maybe worth the price of admission alone. It's, it's real good. It's a restricted lung, and it is dense, rich, saturated flavor on this. The, the pods, the airflow switch, the weight of it, the boredom of it, I think this is going to land, you know, Still pretty, respectively, respectively, respectably. Six and a half banana stickers, final answer. Like I said, it vapes good, the flavor slaps, but while this was on my desk, I found myself constantly, constantly reaching directly past it. Everything looked a little bit more appealing than, 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 the, uh, than the minivan here. I'm not trying to dissuade anybody from being into the XR Pro, I'm just, relaying my experience with the XR Pro. And now I think this is rambling. So hang on, I can't tell you where to get these. And I definitely can't tell you how much they cost, but I would be surprised to see them for more than $50. Might be surprised to see it for even more than like $40. I mean, no matter what the flavor on this is way better than cigarettes, which if you're watching this and you're still smoking them, hey, it's time to switch. I believe in you and it's really easy. All of the science says you should. In the description of this video, I'm gonna put some links to just science and just education. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay cigarette smoke free, yeah, every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.